Last year, after getting my head shaved at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Fest, we took a quick saunter down to E3D to see how the hot ends are made. Join us for a tour and a little bit of an interview. Let's get into it. We're here in the R&D and QC department where ideas come in, products come out, products go in, and products go out. Sam, talk yeah. to us about what really actually goes on here. <laughs> yeah, so um, as you say, this is well, it's actually only one part of our R&D um, area. We have another mm -hmm. one through there, which we'll get onto in a bit. Um, but in here, we have a lot of our um, test equipment. Um, so we have a tensile tester, for <laughs> pushing, pulling things apart. Um, we've got a fleet of printers down the end mm -hmm. that we do things like wear tests um, for like lots of repeated um, printing the same object. Yeah. Um, but then it's also where we have some cleaning stations and we've got like the form labs and other generic test equipment or like printers that we use for, for making jigs and fixtures. Well, always with resin, you got to make sure you keep it clean because as we know, resin is toxic around here and yeah. form labs does make some really crazy resins. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> And they're very crazy expensive too. Uh, <laughs> but you guys have everything from some smaller printers. I even see a belt printer, which is hilarious that I wore my belt printer <laughs> cat shirt yeah, yeah. with cat colored filament, of course. Of course. Um, merch coming soon. <laughs> and then over in QC, it's more about making sure everything is the way it needs to be, right? Yes. So what is one of the biggest challenges with QC and making sure that these things are right? Um, our parts are tiny and the holes are very small and so you, you need to have very precise equipment to be able to measure all that stuff yeah. accurately. Um, we have a, a range of stuff. We have um, quite a lot of optical measurement equipment. Uh, CMMs? Uh, not CMMs, but they are, um, so they have like a telecentric lens. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yep. yeah. So yeah, we've got a lot, lot of optical inspection equipment with telecentric lenses for, mm -hmm. for looking for down on parts. We also have a, a rotary version so that we have a lot of turned components, as, right. as you know. Right. Um, so we can put them on there and we can do like concentricities, runouts, that, that kind of thing. Um, and then all the other stuff you'd expect, pin gauges, thread gauges, mm -hmm. surface reference testers, height gauges, like all, all the good stuff, really. The stuff that you need. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, you pay for quality. And as a lot of you might know, E3D is not the cheapest game out there. Why? Because it's actually good stuff. <laughs> And it's made here in the UK when it can be. That's what manufacturing is about. It's about supporting local facilities when and where you can. And do you pay a little bit extra? Yeah, but it's backed by E3D's quality and E3D's been around for a little bit of time. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They're no spring chickens here. And you know, that's why when you get an E3D V6, when was the last time you ever really maintained your V6? But there's a lot more, so let's, there is, yeah. let's keep going, <laughs> let's keep going. Inside of the machine shop where all those ideas become a reality, we've got tons of different tooling for the multiple vertical mills and lathes. But this vertical mill and the Tormach next to it are quite awesome, including this one having a fourth axis and an umbrella tool changer so that, well, similar to the E3D tool changer, it can just change tools as needed. With this Tormach being the traditional three axis vertical mill that you expect. The traditional style of manufacturing is not lost here at E3D with your Bridgeport style machine. It, while it does have some power feeders on it, this is still the old school where you're turning knobs and making parts. Old school is still cool. Absolutely beautiful machines that probably hold great zeros. And remember kids, if she's got a little rust on her, as long as it's not on the ways, it will still make beautiful parts. Love to see manual milling at E3D. It allows for very quick, easy adjustments to parts and them to be able to test things at a rapid pace. Hence the term rapid prototyping. Check out this awesome Swiss mill bar feeder that they have inside of E3D. Absolutely beautiful piece of machinery that can cut lots of very small parts very, very accurately. We have a bar feeder in the back where you store all of your raw material so that the machine can effectively run reasonably unattended. But with big CNC machines, 
you want to make sure that well and you can see with that tiny little basket that machine is making lots of small parts above the cnc machine shop where all the little tiny parts in it i i wish we could show you guys the cool stuff that's down there but uh we can't show a lot of it we have engineering and this hallway has a lot of history and some future stuff which is behind this white paper nothing we to can't see show that, that to you. Nothing there's to see. nothing to see here no, nothing no. to see here but there is some really cool things to see here sam can you show us yeah so um this like walk, walk right into the engineering office mm -hmm. is where we used for storing all of our um, parts for active projects that we're working on. Yeah. Um, so there is access when we're at our desks. Um, but one thing is, like, we always go on about the, the testing that we do at E3D, mm -hmm. how extensive it is and, like, how many rounds of it that we do. Um, and one thing we do is we keep all of those tests and we log them all. So these tubs that you see here, these are actually all of the test prints from, that's the, so these are, these are labeled, so this is the alpha test prints from mm -hmm. Roto. Mm -hmm. So, like, from back when we started, we still keep them all so that if we, we can compare from before and after to uh, revision changes and things like that, just to make sure that we are going in the right direction and yeah. we haven't missed anything. If we, we can, someone says, oh wait, did you check this? And we're like, well, yeah, look, here's the print. I can prove it. Along with all of the reports that we, we write and, and all, all of that side. And you're changing as few variables as possible, right? You know, you'll get a new prototype and using the same printer, same settings, same G yeah, code exactly. and all that. And you then can compare apples to apples for the most part and yeah. see what changed, if it's better, if it's worse, and try to determine what affects that, right? Yeah, 100%. So how many test prints do you think are sitting here on this wall? <laughs> oh, well, for in the first two phases, it definitely got. And here is Josh. Hello. Hi, Hi Josh. Hi. No, you're good. <laughs> it got to like 4,000 hours of wow. printing or something. And then we moved to, um, and that was all like pre-production stuff. Okay. And so like that, you can, that kind of puts a bit of scale on, yeah. onto it. That's a, that's a lot of just test prints in general. It is. Yeah. I will say there are some really cool sample models, but there's one that is particularly my favorite. Can I grab it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you going for, yeah, of course you are. Of course I am. Because <laughs> yeah. this model, how many nozzles are in here? Uh, enough, I think is this if it would be <laughs> That's a lot of Revos. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. You got to do something cool like this when you have the opportunity. This is a really cool space and it shows that you guys are really maximizing the space that you have. 100%. And I don't see a lot of companies that keep all the test prints too. So that's actually really cool that you keep all of them. So you yeah. can really look at the full on history exactly. of what it took. There's a lot of testing being done here in engineering. So we're gonna go take a look at that. Come along. Yeah. Part of the process in making hot ends specifically with Revo, the heater course is testing. Heater cores can be delicate, and especially because they have built-in thermistors, you gotta make sure things are perfect. Yeah. So you guys test every heater core. Yeah, definitely. And this isn't the, this is just the final stage of testing that we mm -hmm. do. I just, um, we've got the, the goods in QC, but then there are various quality checks along the production line. Right. So when, when these come into E3D, um, the bare wire, the crimps are on the, the crimping machines and yep. the connectors. We attach all of them together. We even put in the potting compound and wow. do all of that sort of stuff. So that's what the line down here is for. So from, from that end to here, you end up building building one of these. A full heater core. Very full cool. heater core. And then what we have here is a bank of testing rigs. Okay. Um, they slide back onto here um, and then in here you place on your heat core onto the spike, mm -hmm. hook up the connectors, um, and then it runs it through some heat up cycles. Okay. And there's various checks for heat up rate, things like resistances and stuff like that, to make sure that this is to spec. Yeah. Um, to make sure that through, although we do lots of checks down the line, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that everything is right once it's finally put together. Right. And with all of this, um, you'll see a, a scanner here. And the, uh, and the screen. Yeah, so th this has a QR code. So when you load this up, you scan them in the order that you load them. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of that data is then logged into our database. So pretty much every piece of equipment that we could log to a database logs to a database. There's only a few manual steps where that isn't feasible, but, but all of the stuff that is uh, electrically controlled are, um, yeah, we, we log all that so that we can make sure that we are um, holding ourselves to the, the high quality standards that we, we want, to, want to be seen as. I remember talking to him about this, saying, 
why did you choose to use the same damn connector? Because people are <laughs> going to do it wrong. He said, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I'm like, what do you mean? If you send all that wattage into a thermistor, you're going to kill it. He said, no, you won't. Its resistance is so high, it's not gonna, nothing's going to happen to it. Yeah. So we use the same connector, so it's one less skew. It's easier to get done because it's one less machine. And at the end of the day, it's easier for the person because if they do need to cut wires, they need to do something, it's one connector. Yeah. We'll card to that video so that you guys can, can see the look on my face because it, it kind of hit me. I'm like, he's right. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So it was like, it's also a, if it doesn't work, flip the wires. But even if you do it wrong, you're not, you're not going to kill it. Yeah, this was like the, the thing that we stuck on a lot was just about the design of this because... <laughs> I mean, a lot went, a lot went I into imagine, that. I can imagine, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, the amount of, uh, of hours into creating that product was, was a lot. Do you have a favorite story with Sanjay about, about this? And... So it's not necessarily specifically about that, but mm -hmm. something that we would love is unplanned whiteboard sessions. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, in the, in the office upstairs, we've got banks of whiteboards and then a big screen. And we'd all just like huddle around, no idea is a, a stupid idea, no idea is a bad idea, throw it all down. Yep. And then out of it, I mean, that's, that's where our version of the, the high flow came from. Mm -hmm. a, like an after hours, it started at like half four, quick, oh, let's just have a quick chat about this. Next thing you know, it's half past six at night and everyone's still going at it. Um, Been there before. Yeah. Been there before. They, yeah, they, they were my favorites. It's like you wish you could go back and just record them. I know. Just for all the yeah. fun that's missed. So, yeah. Oh, this is so cool, Sam. It, it, is, it is nice to see the processes from you know, kind of start to finish of what it takes to make some of the best damn hot ends in the world right here in the United Kingdom. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, but this is not the final step. Yeah, at this point, the parts are done, but yep. we then have to put them into inventory. Yep. And then when you guys go to E3D online, which of course we'll link to in the description down below, they make orders and then you guys have to take care of that logistics part, which is yep. a little harder than you might think. So let's go take a look at what that takes to uh, get this from my hands, or your hands, yeah. to your all's door, just through here. I feel like Andrew's gonna get so tired of the walking shots. Inside of shipping, we can see thousands of parts on shelves. And this looks like a regular shipping department, and mostly because it is. But this is where tiny, tiny little parts get stored and tracked in a marvelous way. So when you order a 0.4 nozzle, you get a 0.4 nozzle versus a 0.6 or a 0.8. And if you're ordering a Revo, well, at least those have those color-coded rings that make life just a little bit easier. It was amazing to go to E3D and see kind of everything that's there from those beautiful printers like the Mendel 90 serial number five. Super, super cool. But I had the opportunity to talk to others at E3D. I think I have fallen into the role of the parent of this, of, uh, you know, around here, which, you know what, I'm cool with. He did say one thing to me, he said, it's really nice to be important, Matt, but it's very important to be nice. Sanjay was, uh, we had, we've had some good times, so many wonderful memories. The acid one though, that's probably like, that's probably up there. If you do check the end card and the description, you'll find the full interviews if you want to watch them for yourself. I want to give a huge thank you to all of you that have watched this. There's a lot more content from Smurf and the surrounding times coming out, including a lot of just walking around different cities of B-roll, and that will all be available to our paying members whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible. And of course, a huge thank you to Printed Solid. Yeah, we, we do actually have a filament giveaway. Yeah, I didn't talk about it through any of that video because we didn't know that we were going to be working with printed solid like this now so uh there there is a form down there for filament giveaway so if you want to pick up some e3d stuff we got affiliate links down in that description as well so if you do want to get some stuff from them you can but that's all i have for you all today again let me know your thoughts on the tour of e3d in those comments because we might be going back again this year. If we're going to Smurf, maybe we'll go back to E3D and tour again and see what's changed. So if you do want to see more of what's going on at E3D, let us know. And if you want us to interview anybody from E3D or have them on as podcast guests, love to know that as well. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. And remember, it's nice to be important, but it's even more important to be nice. Take care.